Welcome artists, we're going to get started with our Halloween painting. I am going to start off using a wood surface, but you could do this on a canvas or on a sketch pad. Uh, let's start with our supplies. First of all, you need a paper plate or any plate as long as you wash it afterwards. We're going to be using our white, then a color of choice for the background. It should be a light color. I chose pink and black. And then towards the end, we are going to be using a little bit of yellow. Now for paint brushes, I do have four different sizes. My largest being um, 3 fourths of an inch brush. And I also have a paper towel and a bowl with water. All right, so um, first of all, remember to cover your surfaces. I do have a tablecloth down. Remember to wear clothes that you don't mind getting paint on because that does happen or wear an apron. So let's get started. We're gonna use our 3 4 inch brush first. I'm going to dip it in our color of choice, mine being pink. I'm gonna get a good amount on my brush. Then I'm going to make a circle. This circle should be at least 50% of your surface. Uh, this right here is a 15 by 12. It is landscape. So I want to make sure the circle is about 50% of my surface. And I'm going to start moving that paint inwards. So I'm gonna start making the circle smaller on the inside of the circle. I'm going to scoop up more and I'm going to move it around. That's looking good. Okay, so once I have a thick circle, I'm going to dunk that same brush into the white. So I'm going to scoop some up on the edge because I don't want to stain all of my white paint. And now I'm going to start on the inside edge of the circle and I'm going to move in. This is going to help me blend, so I'm going to go right on that edge and move that paint with my brush. If it's too dry, go ahead and grab more paint. I'm going to scoop up more white paint and I'm going to keep moving inwards, making smaller circles, circle towards the inside. So think of this as a whirlpool, so you're moving inwards. So now I'm going to add more white. I'm going to move it in right on that edge and keep moving in until I cover that entire circle from the inside. I'm going to start moving outwards, making it wider. And I'm going to start to blend those colors in. Okay, so now that I'm towards the darker pink, I'm going to go ahead and dunk my paintbrush back into the color of choice. And I'm going to add that to the edge. I'm going to keep blending that in. Now I'm going to want this circle to be at least 90% of my canvas. So all this should be covered up with my color of choice. If it's getting too dry, go ahead and scoop it up again and keep moving it around. Making smaller circles again towards the inside because I want to make sure it's all blended as much as possible so that the transition looks smooth. So I don't want to put too much pressure on my paintbrush as I move inwards. Just very gently. And add some more white to that. I'm going to start inside and move it out a little bit. Add more white to the center and move it out. There we go. Very Quickly move it around. So you're making that. All right, so we're still adding more pink. I am basically spooning it in onto my 
brush and I'm going to add it to the edge so that I could cover up as much of the surface as possible. So remember, covering at least 90% of this canvas with our color of choice on the edge. Now don't be scared of the paint use as much as you need. I'm going to scoop it up again, put it on the edge, and bring it down. Okay, I think one more scoop will do the, Do it. Looking pretty good right now basically I just have the corners that don't have paint real quick I'm going to start doing that quick motion where I'm moving it inwards if you see any clumps that are forming go ahead and scrape them off either with the back of the brush or your fingernail so that they're out of the out of the way and I'm going to keep making those circles inwards so I could blend it together pretty good add a little bit of white as I move closer to the lighter area a little bit more white so it doesn't um, get too pink I do want to keep that gradient going good job looking good all right so um, now I'm going to dunk the same brush into the black. I'm going to move from the edges inwards. So I'm going to dunk it. I still haven't cleaned my brush. I'm going to put some on that corner, some on this corner, some on that corner, and finally on the last corner. Now I'm going to start moving in that black inwards. Just let it blend together. And I don't want to use too much black um, because that light surface is what I need for my silhouette. Start to blend it together. And we start making that circle motion, I'm moving it inwards. So I don't want it too dark, so again with that black, I'm going to dunk it in the remaining pink, scoop it up, and move it towards the edge so that it blends nicer together. There we go. We start to have like a gray type of color going on. Good. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more pink to my so that I could move that color around. Remember to paint your frame or paint your edges on your canvas. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. All right, so I'm gonna do this one more time. This is what I have so far. I'm gonna add more white. So I'm gonna scoop up. I haven't washed my brush. Scoop up some white. I'm gonna to add to the center. I'm gonna to try to smooth it out and then slowly bring it outwards. I'm going to try to be as gentle as possible so that my, my paint doesn't scratch off anything off the canvas. I want to make it smooth. This is what I'm trying to do at this moment is just smooth it all out because it is drying already. So I'm just whitening it up. And like I said, I'm just trying to move those light colors around so that I have the use of more space on the canvas once I start to add the silhouette. So again, once more, I'm gonna add a little bit of white because I want to lighten up this canvas. So I'm actually going to add a little bit to the outside. So I'm just gonna make two streaks on the outside and I'm gonna start to move it around so that I could lighten up the canvas.
there we go that's what I'll be using all right so if you're still blending between that border with the pink and the black I recommend that you scoop up some more pink or your color of choice onto your brush and then in between those colors you just mix it and move your brush over it that's going to blend it on my canvas this color is making kind of like a grayish purplish color and it's blending pretty well now I'm gonna have to let this dry so that I can move on to the next step if you have time just let it sit if not take out the hair dryer and dry it off all right so once your canvas or your surface has dried completely you can move on to the next step and basically from the center this is my center I'm going to make my first point just a little bit below so I'm going to mark it so there's my center I'm going to move down just a bit and mark it that's going to be where I'm going to start the center of my pumpkin so I'm going to start by making an oval and that's basically just to center my pumpkin once I have my oval using black and using the smallest brush I'm going to make the first side so I'm going to curve up and then completely down so from one side I curve up and then I'm going to make a semicircle down on the other side I'm going to try to mirror that but pumpkins aren't symmetrical they're all different shapes and sizes so if you make a mistake just go ahead and try again there we go pretty good pumpkin I am liking it so I'm going to make this pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern so I want to make a face for it so I'm going to start by making some eyes with triangles so let me go ahead and do those there's one eye let me go ahead and make the other Right, so I've got some nice eyes. Now I need a nose as well. Slightly smaller triangle. Okay, I'm going to stop there for a sec. Alright, now I'm going to continue with the mouth. I'm going to make a wide mouth and I'm going to add a lot of teeth, sharp teeth to it. So let me go ahead and I'm going to make a semicircle upwards. And then I'm going to make another, kind of like a crescent moon. There we go, he looks like very happy. However, well, the teeth are gonna make him look more menacing like a piranha. So I'm gonna start making little triangles inside the mouth, upside down triangles. And if you notice that um, there's no space in between the triangles, that's okay. We're gonna fix it with our yellow once we add the yellow to it. There we go. Underneath, I'm gonna try to add more triangles to it. There we go and um, now I'm going to add a stem at the very top it's going to curve to the left so I'm going to make a, a curve that way and now at the top I'm going to close it up and make it into a crescent moon so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, fill in this pumpkin except I'm not going to fill in the eyes the nose all right, so the teeth are actually going to be um, black, so we're not going to have to worry about those. So I could go ahead and fill in the teeth, the inside of the teeth. Turn. Um, basically any errors I'll fix with the yellow so I'm gonna let it dry so that I am able to do that later and the next step is going to add either a crow an owl or a cat that's going to be perched on this jack-o'-lantern and I'm going to teach you how to do that before I get to 
doing the raven on my canvas, remember that you could always practice on your paper plate or on a piece of paper so that you get some confidence. All right, so we're gonna get started with making the raven that is perched on top of this jack-o'-lantern. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a dot. This is where the head of the raven is gonna go. This is going to be in, on my canvas about four fingers up. Depending on the size of your canvas, it might be two or three fingers. All right, but that's where I want my head to be. And I'm going to start by making that dot into a circle. And sometimes I do have to step back a little bit to make sure that that looks about right on the canvas. It's a good size, it's not too small. Now I could always go larger once I've done the basic outline or if I make any mistakes. I could easily make this raven into a cat. So let's do the head. Okay, now the next step is going to be uh, kind of like a teardrop. So on the, it's going to be a little slanted. I'm going to make the first curve and then on the other side, I'm gonna curve it down. So this is going to be the body. Like I said, it's like a slanted teardrop. And it's looking pretty good. I do like that shape. Now I'm going to add the tail, so the tail is going to be a long oval. Now I do want to make it a little bit, I'm going to add more feathers to it, so I'm going to bring out these little flaps on the side of that oval. And they do get smaller, so here I want to make a smaller one on each side. And I could always make that over a little bit longer. So I'm going to fill that in. Okay, that's going to be the tail. Um, I am going to add just a little bit more here, thickness. And now I'm going to fill in that body. Now the final step is going to be to add the beak. Now the beak is a little bit curved, but I'm going to make it just straight and then I will add a little bit of a curve to the top of it just because if we curve it too much, it's gonna start looking like a toucan instead of a raven. So with my brush, I'm going to just make a straight I'm trying to think whether I should make it facing the other way. But I'm going to make it to the left, just a straight. Beak. So right now it looks like a regular bird, but a raven has a little bit of a curve on the tops. So with my brush, I'm going to very gently just add a bit to the top. To curve it. There we go. And that's going to be my raven. Now, check out this yellow. This yellow is not a bright yellow. It is a pastel yellow. And that's what you're going to want to use so it covers up any mistakes uh, of the black paint. For example, I leaked into the eye space. So that pastel color with that white undertone is going to help me cover that up. If you don't have a pastel yellow, you can always mix it in with some white paint. All right, this is the last step. I'm going to use my pastel yellow to fill in the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and then a little circle for the raven's 
eye. So let me go ahead and get started. I'm going to use my smallest brush to do this. I'm going to work very carefully. I'm going to use this brush here. I'm going to make sure it's completely clean. I do see some black at the tip or my smallest flat brush to do this. So I added a few um, crazy feathers. So basically what I did was I dipped my brush in black paint and I just laid it up against the surface where I wanted to make those feathers stick out. So for example here, just lay it and move it towards the body to get those um, ruffled, ruffled, ruffled um, feathers. Okay, so I accidentally filled in the eyes a little bit too much, but I will be able to fix that with the yellow. Now on the tail, I don't want it to just be uh, one solid feather. I do want to add another little gap, like if it had uneven feathers on its tail. There we go. That's looking way better. Awesome. And I believe my daughter's going to add a cat to the top of her jack lantern. All right, so on um, sketch paper, I'm going to teach you how to do a cat in case you want to do a cat. My eight-year-old did do a cat on her pumpkin, so I'm going to start off with a circle. And that's going to be the head. Now I'm going to make a body which is going to be slightly larger curves. So it kind of looks like a bowling pin. I'm going to fill it in. And then from there, I'm going to add a tail. And the tail is basically going to come from the bottom right. It's going to arch up, and then over to the right. This is going to be my cat tail. Then I'm going to make ears on my cat. And then I would go ahead and fill this in. There we go. So here we have it, our finished Halloween painting. So. I hope you all enjoyed this and that you love your painting. Uh, please go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and um, if you can, leave a little comment. Thank you.